on a little walk from Jovanhenna's Chai Shop to Eddie's room. It takes about two minutes. Uh, normally, for me, uh, well, we take 15 minutes for Eddie to navigate this trip. Uh, it wasn't until recently saying, uh, in the home of Jack, one of his original followers from the 60s, and uh, Jack had married a native, and, uh, well, well, Jack was the way the wife protested, Eddie taking up too much space, so uh, hassled him out of the house, yeah. Well, uh, no resistance from Eddie. Uh, he now re rents a room in a sprawling going home. <laughs> you know, there's an ag aggressive, yelping uh, little mutt really g getting on my <laughs> I pick up a stick to protect myself. <laughs> Eddie simply laughs at the dog, um, shuffles, scuffles along to his room. Uh, the room of the octogenarian. Nothing special. A large room with a big bed in the middle. Dark, uh, dim inside. No private bathroom. Maybe three dollars a day. Yeah. I hang around. Ask Eddie, uh, what do you do in your room? Uh, Eddie nods to his radio and says, I dance. <laughs> well, caught by surprise you know, by his dancing reply. Uh, a delightful, uh, deep insight about Eddie comes to me. Uh, for him, dancing to the music from the radio makes him completely at one with the universe. Yeah, and uh, purely content to be alone. Well, what's it for me? Uh, well, for me is walking in pure nature. Yeah, with a joint of fatty bad twisted up. Makes me one alone, uh, you know, uh, with the universe. And I'm totally happy to be absolutely by myself. And uh, that if a human being can discover what the it, the unique it, is, <laughs> what makes that... Uh, person perfectly content, uh, one with the universe, to be alone, uh, then he is a free, realized human being. Uh, for Eddie, it, music, yeah, dancing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody's got their private uh, key, it, to discover and take absolute refuge in that. Well, uh, yeah, Eddie, uh, he believes he is fundamentally alone in his existence. You know, the existentialists of Paris are his guides up to now. And uh, this as a, as existential acceptance of his aloneness is up to this point, for Eddie, his liberation. Oh, he, he no longer needs to smoke hashish or maneuver, manipulate people for sex. Oh, I gaze around his dimly lit room. Oh, radio, books, plenty of space to dance in, yeah. 83 years old, Eddie is obviously content to live alone, dwell alone. His relationship with the Golan family sheltering him, drama-free, calm, unassuming. Even that yapping dog doesn't bother him at all. Well, at sunset, I, I greet Eddie. Uh, at his room, and we amble over to Xavier's uh, restaurant and bar. 
Besides the French couple, oh, we are the only diners. Oh, menu luscious, huh? Yeah. We choose a, a grilled river fish from, right here from the Arabian Sea and reminisce a sipping Xavier's finest rum. Oh, balmy tropical atmosphere. Yeah. Xavier, the owner, wanders over, joins our table, yeah. Oh. And Xavier talks about the amazing tolerance of the Goans toward the bizarre behavior of the hippies coming in. Flipped out hippies? Yeah. He recalls one time, he's coming home from church with his wife, and he finds a guy in her part of the closet trying on her dress <laughs> naked. Ah, yeah. Goins, uh, unbelievably tolerant. I mentioned uh, to Xavier that my rent uh, behind Joe Bananas in 1972 was $5 a month. It seemed to me ridiculously inexpensive. One bedroom, la lava block stone house, beautiful backyard, uh, but Xavier puts the puts it in perspective and context. And I note this. I later write it down too. Uh, the standard minimum wage for a common going going laborer at the time was one Indian rupee a day. <laughs> Ten cents a day. And this comes out to thirty rupees a month. Three dollars a month. So your rent of five dollars a month was more than a man's wages for a month. Xavier patiently explains. So. <sighs> what a mellow, memorable meal. Gourmet, everything. I slip Xavier a $20 bill. Thanks, man. Yeah, I'm deeply touched by the private, breezy uh, evening with eight finger at each other, two of us, and Xavier on the side. Great. Uh, yeah, a golden memory. <laughs> uh, yeah, saying goodnight to Eddie. He wonders. Oh, Earthman, uh -uh. have you seen Camilo yet? With uncanny precision, Eddie always guides me to my next book interview. Camilo?